Today I'm going to uh, finish uh, briefly talking about demons. Now you know that's not true. We're not going to finish talking about them. As long as we are on this earth and the demons remain our enemies, we're going to continue. But we were doing this series for the past two months where we were talking about generational curses and how demons affect our life. Also we talked about how and why demons come back. We've mentioned issues of unforgiveness. We've mentioned the issues when we don't fight back when our life is not clean. But today I want to mention another issue that I believe is probably one of the most important issue when it relates to living a life of freedom. Evil spirits, demons and Satan does a lot to affect our mind. When he comes into a person's life or when he even attacks a person's life, he begins to first of all and as main object of his attack is a person's mind. Actually one of the signs of a curse and a blessing is revealed in a person's state of mind. Many times we look at the person's finances, we look at the person's health, we look at the person's uh, relationships, we're like well there must be a curse in that. But actually the major issue where you can see someone has a curse or someone has a blessing has to do with how their mind is. You look at the Abraham's life and you see the blessing of Abraham. One of the things that makes a blessing of Abraham is the fact that Abraham did not live by his phobias and nightmares. He was a man of dreams and visions. When you become a person of visions and dreams, you become a person who already resembles a blessing of God on your life. You are already beginning the blessing in your life. If you get the blessing in your wallet, get the blessing with your spouse, get the, get the blessing in your job, get the blessing in your health, but your mind is not affected, my friend, you are not truly blessed yet. Most of you who were born here, you came into this world head first. And the women they know here that one of the worst things that you can hear the news is when your baby's head is not directed toward the exit. And they have to do this thing called C-section. Why? Because you have to understand that legs, you can't just get out legs first. You have to get out head first. And that's how God wants to get us out of every problem. Head first. Turn to your neighbor say head first. Turn to your other neighbor say you're coming out of this. Head first. Don't touch their head because they might fight you back. You want to get out of a situation in your life. You must understand you cannot get out with your wallet first. With your wife first. With your girlfriend first. With your education first. God first want to set your head free. That's why we need the church. That's why we need the Bible. That's why we need books. That's why we need classes. That's why we need the school of leaders. That's why we need podcasts. Why? So that this thing get, uh, get, get out of the mess that we are in and the legs will follow. The wallet will follow. Education will follow. Relationships will follow. Our freedom will follow. Everything else will follow. Somebody say yes. Everything will follow. We see that in the Bible when the scripture says that Satan blinded the eyes, the minds of people and they don't believe the truth. We see the scripture tells us that people can have an anxious mind where your mind is just so soaked with anxiety where actually your mind gets the name anxious. The scripture even says when people refuse to keep God and truth in their mind that they are turned over to a debased mind, a perverted mind by which they are led eventually into perverted things as Apostle Paul describes in Romans chapter 1. We see in the scripture when a man was demon possessed he actually ran around naked mental and when he got free from all of his demons one of the first signs that he was free is the Bible says he was sitting in his right mind. The scripture says that God has not given a spirit of fear, phobia, anxiety, depression, intrusive thoughts and nightmares but He's given us a spirit of power, love and a sound mind. Somebody say sound mind. It's a clear mind. It's when you can think straight even when things are tough but there's something about your mind. It's a sharp and there's a laser because it's filled with the truth. The scripture says when we renew our mind is where our mind gets an update and the renewal our life begins to reflect that by being completely changed. Amen. 
the scripture that I want to read to you today and you have heard the scripture probably have memorized it already but I will read it for you once again and it comes from John chapter 8 verse 32 and it says the following you shall know the truth and can you repeat it can you finish it for me I think the people on the podcast cannot hear that can you repeat it louder you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free if it's true that Satan's main attack is our mind as Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that we have to put on the armor of God to stand on the day evil day to withstand the fiery darts of the devil the fiery darts of the devil are the thoughts he sends in our mind if our mind is so important it would make sense where Satan's main attack is not going to be your marriage it's not listen gonna be even your children it's not gonna be your parents it's not gonna be your job it's gonna be your mind he will use the job he will use the money he will use the family he will use your friends he will use your emotions to attack one area he's after one area your mind because if he can demolish your mind your life will fall apart if the bible is true when it says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he meaning it doesn't say as you are so you think meaning your thoughts are result of your life it says the opposite your life is a result of your thoughts that means as you think so you are not as you are so you think See most of us have bought into this lie. The reason I think the way I think was my life is hard. Well if you would have lived with my wife you wouldn't have any different mind than me. You know if you would have had my boss as your boss you would be depressed too. Well if you would have been in a challenging situation as I am in you know what you would understand why I'm always depressed. But the Bible says your life is the result of your mind not the other way around which tells me that Satan will not attack your life he will attack through your life and really his target is not your life his target is your mind because if he demolishes your mind your life will fall apart as a man as a man thinks his life will follow where the mind goes man follows say this with me where the mind goes man follows where your mind goes your life will follow your thoughts create feelings your feelings affect your behavior your behavior creates habits habits determines life and life creates a legacy for your children everything starts with here where the mind goes man follows statistics says somebody I'm not sure how they calculated that but that on the average we think about 10 to 20 something thousand thoughts a day the interesting part is 70 percent of all of our thoughts are repetitive that means they're coming from before thoughts that we've thought, thought before your subconscious mind is 30 times 30,000 times more powerful than your conscious mind your subconscious mind means your mindset is 30,000 times more powerful than your mind 95 percent of all your behaviors are automatic a normal human can speak at the speed of 200 to 300 words per minute your subconscious mind can think at the rate of a thousand words per minute your subconscious mind can process 30 million bits of information per second while our conscious mind can only process 40 bits of information per second our subconscious mind makes 88% of our brain capacity. You control your mind. Your mindset controls you. 
Have you ever sent an email to someone who is out of the office and before even they read the email, you already got the response? Out of the office response? They're saying, I am out of the office from this day to that day. And it's called automatic response. Your mindset, your subconscious, this is where the strongholds are at. This is where things are built with time over time. They become part of automatic response to a situation and most of you if you just pay attention tomorrow at work how you speak to the family how you speak to the co-workers how you kind of live through what you do you will realize that so much of automatic response comes out quickly and that comes out because your mind you can control your mindset you cannot Anytime I heard message on thoughts or importance of you know strongholds and everything one of the first things that I wanted to do always is I wanted to change my mindset. I was like man my mindset was so in, uh, when I was younger my mindset was full of insecurity. My mindset was full of people don't like me. People always reject me. Everywhere I went in I felt like nobody people just were not nice to me so I blamed it on people. Then I realized the fault was mine not theirs. And so when I realized the fault was mine I said okay I'm gonna go and change my mindset. I'm just gonna read one book and my mindset is gonna change. I read one book my mindset didn't change. I read the second book my mindset didn't change. It took one month my mindset didn't change and I became disappointed and I said the preacher lied. You cannot change your mind. You can change your mind. You just cannot change your mindset. You say I don't understand. Hang in there. You can only change what you fill your mind with which over time spills and becomes the mindset but you can never ever change a mindset only your mind whatever is filled with changes your mindset you cannot do that so the mistake we make is when we find insecurity when we find depression when we find rejection when we find hate when we find constant thoughts of jealousy what we do is we say well i'm just gonna go find me a bible verse and i'm gonna change my mindset and you will quickly find out that's not gonna happen. You can only fill your mind and once it fills to the capacity it spills and becomes the mindset. But listen not in one day because it didn't take one day to develop the very mindset you are trying to change today. Can somebody say yes. They've done this studies also with elephants if you ever go to a circuit or circus and you see a large you know 10,000 11,000 pound elephant you know tied to a small little rope led by a tiny little woman and you're like how could this big I mean this is a bazooka you know 10 feet high 11,000 pounds that thing is five times heavier than my car you could just go like this and the whole building will fall apart how can that big powerful thing be obedient to as much as such a small rope by a tiny little woman well if, if you study a little bit more of how they break elephants what they do when an elephant is born two days after the birth of an elephant when the elephant weighs only a few hundred pounds they tie a very large and strong chain around its leg and they hit it into some kind of a very strong pole or a stronghold and of course the elephant though being weak but very strong mentally. The well elephant is very curious. The elephant is very free on inside but on the outside it's very small. So it begins to jerk and it jerks one gets hurt and it jerks second time and the same place where the wound is it gets more painful. It gets more painful until the elephant begins to recognize it's less painful to be bound than to be free. With time, the elephant gets more power physically and gets less power mentally. And when it's 11,000 pounds heavy, it's a little baby on inside who says, I got hurt. The more I try to be free, the more it's painful. And you can tie that beast with a small rope and a tiny person and do whatever you want with it why because it has the physical power and it has the mental weakness but before it had a mental strength and had no physical power that's what devil does with us we try something we fail we try something we fail we try something we fail and then trying it again hurts 
and then to protect our feelings we give up and then what happens is we've grown spiritually and God says well I want you to try this you like, no 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 I can't do this I got hurt last time but God wants to break mental strongholds over our life today over our finances over our health over our relationships someone say amen I want to give you just three simple truths lessons tips on how to break down mental strongholds what you feed your mind with with time becomes your mindset so write down point number one what I feed my mind with becomes my mindset your mindset is a result of what your mind is filled with consistently to the capacity if you fill your mind with something occasionally it will not have enough capacity to slip into a mindset if you fill your mind something if you would feed your body the way you feed your mind your body wouldn't bring you here today but if you do it consistently if you do it systematically you're doing it regularly you create a routine where you fill your mind with something this is what happens with time that becomes a mindset where it becomes automatic you don't even have to think it already comes out it already happens and you let your life kind of take control when satan brought a thought to judas and the scripture says that judas you know he allowed that thought to come inside of him i'm not sure that judas you know thought that this thought actually came from the devil i think he probably thought this thought came from me and the thought was simple you can betray jesus and make some money along the way i mean come on how many of us have ever had thoughts to make money in dubious ways okay how many of us are liars here okay so raise your hand if you're a liar okay that's good everybody some of you've done that last week we, we we all have thought of making money in dubious ways how many of us have thought that that thought came from the devil no that came from me so that's exactly what Judas was he was in the same place he was in the church he was with Jesus and the thought came in to make more money in dubious ways that thought was from the devil and the scripture says that Judas allowed that thought to come inside and not only he allowed he nurtured it he spoon fed that thought he assisted that thought there's two things you can do with your thoughts you resist them or you assist them and Judas he assisted it he fed it he nurtured it he rehearsed it and it turned into a feeling it turned into a behavior it turned into an action where he actually went and he betrayed Jesus but something happened in the process Judas the Bible says Satan entered Judas when you assist constantly receive negative thoughts and you don't filter them you don't find out or ask or find out where are they from who sends these thoughts where are these thoughts that you're worthless you're ugly you're poor you'll never make it you'll die like this your life has no meaning everyone doesn't like you people always reject you these thoughts have made not in China not in Mexico not in Denver made in pit of hell sent to destroy you if you don't read the small print you'll cook it inside of you which will open the door to a demonic possession demonic possession where a person becomes possessed with the spirit of loneliness every place they walk in people don't want them every relationship they go in that rejection kicks people out that depression becomes a demon that begins to torment and begins to hurt your life those suicidal tendencies go from tendencies to thoughts and go to attempts and they eventually become a lifestyle and become something that you do and act not everything that comes into your head has to stay it's very simple Martin Luther said birds can fly over your head you can stop that you can stop them from building a nest on the top of your head you can either assist or you can resist whatever you feed your mind with today will become your mindset tomorrow amen you know today five percent of people think 15 percent of people think that they think and the rest of us would rather die than to think we don't want to think no more we let whatever happens around us just go inside 
we don't we no longer we become mentally lazy and most of us have believed a lie I just can't think it just thinks from me well my bible makes me to understand think on these things if you couldn't think on these things God wouldn't tell you to think amen and then we have a generation today that has stopped filling their mind on purpose they get filled by default means whatever is around them fills their mind may I ask you a question who fills your mind what fills your mind is it you or is it your job is it you or is it your enemies is it you or is it your circumstances what's dominating constantly your mind who is renting space between your ears and is not paying rent are you reading books are you listening to podcasts are you reading the scriptures regularly are you taking certain classes that you can increase your knowledge a statistic says that an average successful CEO reads four books a month and an average employee in his company reads one book a year and 60% of them only get to one chapter If you want to google the difference how poor people and rich people think you will be shocked how they have the same nose as you the same eyes the same amount of blood they have everything the only difference the way they look at the problem they see it different and why was it because they're lucky no it's because they choose to feed themselves instead of opening themselves up and say whatever happens happens my friend if you want to have a new mindset you got to choose what you fill your mind with stop changing your mindset change your diet change your intake and that will change your mindset over time can somebody say amen? amen point number two when you feed your mind you liberate your life when you feed your mind you liberate your life we read today that it says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free God gives us the truth but God doesn't shove it into our mouth. The Bible says God feeds the birds of the earth. But how many of you have ever seen God throwing food into the bird's mouth? That never happens. God makes the food available and it is up to the bird to go and find that food and put that food from the ground, food into its mouth. Same thing with the truth. God makes the truth. God makes the right knowledge available. But it's, it is my and your job to take that knowledge from the pages of the Bible and print it into the thought patterns of my mind. It is my job to make the knowledge God makes available and to know that knowledge. Scripture doesn't say the truth sets you free. The scripture says when you know the truth, that's what sets you free. The presence of truth won't do any difference to you. You can have a truckload of soap in your garage and stink like a skunk. Why? Because having soap in your garage doesn't make you clean. Amen. It's taking the soap out of the garage and going into your shower and having it in your shower still doesn't make you clean. Applying it on your life makes you clean. Somebody say amen. When you take the truth from God's word, when you take the truth about relationships, about marriage, about finances, when you take the truth about business, when you take God's truth about life, when you take God's truth about your health and you begin to not just have it here and say I bought the book, I went to the conference but I read the book, I memorize this and I begin to apply it, then you begin to see you are clean, you are changed, you are liberated, your life becomes different not because the truth is available, it's because you took advantage of the truth. Can somebody say amen? Allowing the truth to come will allow us to be free. When you allow that truth, when you know that truth, that truth begins to set you free. When I was younger, when we just immigrated to the United States, I was, I found myself addicted to a very ungodly behavior and that addiction was addiction to pornography. And it became already kind of like a mental stronghold in my mind that I believe the lie also that all men struggle and it's men's weakness, which is weird. You know, men's, a weakness is when you go to the gym and you can't lift 500 pounds. That's a weakness. It's not a weakness when you're staring at naked women. That's a wickedness and that's my that was my problem you know and every man's issue 
what do you mean it's every Jesus is that was the issue too that Jesus during the night with his disciples rolled out a computer and watched this stuff of course not but this mental lies that you begin to hear and you begin to believe and when I was that age a young person I wanted to be so free from this demonic stronghold. I knew it was the demons behind that pornography. And what I began to do as a person, I didn't just say, well, Lord, if you want me to be pure, if you want me to be holy, you know my address, you go find me and set me free. I'm waiting for you, Lord. I didn't do that. Yes, I went to my pastor. Yes, I prayed with Pastor Benny here on the screen until the TV screen got so juicy and greasy. Yes, I went to Bob Larson and I was hoping something will come out. And nothing screamed and yelled out of me and... You know what I was left with? I started to buy every book I can find by people who used to be addicted to that and how they got out. At the age of 16, 17, I read so many books on purity. I could get a doctoral degree on that issue. I've literally, anything I found, anyone I heard, I began to listen, I began to read, I began to read, I began to, I became desperate. And you know what happened during one book, one paragraph, something stuck inside of me that became a turning point in the prayer that I prayed that liberated my life without shaking baking without the anointing water we didn't even know at the time about the anointing water without even those anointed ministers of God the truth of God Holy Spirit used that truth that I was filling my mind with he first dethroned the wrong mindsets and then he brought that freedom where now by God's grace it's been over a decade and God has given me that freedom in that area. I've seen the same thing with my wife when she talked about the loneliness on the testimony today. What you know she didn't mention is that the work she worked in is she would listen from five sometimes to six hours of podcasts every single day. To that point that she would come and she would say Vlad I have listened to everything that you ever put in and I've already listened twice. Is there anything else? And during one prayer time it's when Holy Spirit made it more real that it was a generational curse and that she needs to stand against it and God by his great power not only delivered her and he delivered me but he also set us on a journey by which we can even receive more freedom in other areas in the future because we develop habits of feeding ourselves constantly in Jesus name. Can somebody say amen. Point number three. Knowledge is the key that unlocks what's already yours. Knowledge is the key that unlocks already yours. When you know the truth, the truth will set you free. You know not everything that is true is the truth. My eyes will tell me that there is no music, there is no sound in this room and that is true. But the truth is my ears will tell me there is a sound in this room. It's a crazy white boy preaching. That's the sound. But my eyes will say, there is no sound. I cannot see the sound and my eyes are true. But my ears saying the truth. See what this woman was saying, it was, the, it was true. She had the epileptic attack. But the truth was by his stripes she was healed. See it is true you are poor. But it's the truth. That God is your provider. What is true can change. What is the truth can never change because it has God behind him. It is true that you may feel loneliness but the truth is God says I will never leave you an orphan. I will always be with you. If you take an ice cube and put an ice in your hand and hold it for a few hours and throw the ice away your still hand will still be cold just like it was when you had the ice even when you don't have the ice see you cannot trust what is true you always have to bake your stand your life and hold your life on what is the truth and the truth is what God says our nation makes the laws God says the truth our nation determines what's legal God determines what's right your circumstances tell you the facts God tells you the truth See, maybe you're depressed, maybe you're discouraged, maybe you have a bad day and you're saying that is the truth. I'm just such a discouraged and depressed. You know, I know that if I come to you and I give you $10,000, your face will brighten up. So your depression is not truth 
because if ten thousand dollars can change it that tells me one thing that is not the truth because the real truth no one can change ten thousand dollars cannot change a sickness cannot change a promotion cannot change having a boyfriend losing a boyfriend cannot change no one can change the truth it stands eternal your circumstances can change know the truth it will set you free know the truth you gotta know the truth when your circumstances are saying one thing sometimes truth is very hard to know because truth stands in contradictions to our circumstances truth stands in contradictions to our feelings and truth stands in contradictions to what we see what we hear what we feel nevertheless God's truth is what sets us free can somebody say amen knowledge is the key that unlocks everything that's already yours in second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says the following as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him now watch this the bible says god's power has given given is past tense given means you already have it somebody say i have it, I have it. and to the other neighbor says i don't see it okay so what did god give you already all somebody say all all, all things that pertain means that relate to life. Life includes for you, me, means school, family, the crazy kids, the crazy boss or the crazy employees. Life means finances. Life means college. Life means your marriage. Life means everything. Car, house, insurance, retirement fund. God says I have given you everything all things that are pertaining to life and on the top of that God throws a cherry and he says and godliness. Godliness means God likeness. This includes your home group. This includes your righteousness. This includes your purity. This includes healing other people through the power of Christ. This includes prophesying. This includes everything. So in here what it looks like to me is that you already have everything that you need. The question rises up was Peter was Peter high or I'm crazy because whatever he's saying here I don't see it in my life but we miss the point through somebody say through the knowledge what God has everything he has for you he put it in the locker and the key to that locker is knowledge and many times what we do is we say I'm too busy to learn I've done all the learning in high school. I am sick and tired of those books. I keep coming to this church. They're telling me to take notes. They're telling me to listen to podcasts. If you ever met with me, you know one thing. I will always leave you with recommendation of podcasts to listen to. If you ever met me, I will always give you five, six books to read. Why? Because I've discovered a key to life and godliness. It's not that I'm lucky. It's not that I'm better than other people. It's that if you allow the right knowledge to go into your mind, it begins to unlock the things God said are already yours. It's the key. A lot of people treat knowledge, treat truth, treat reading, treat listening to podcasts with such a dis distaste. And they said it's boring. I don't like that. I just like rap or I just like fiction. I just like you know I like me Twilight books. I like me Harry Potter books. I like me fiction books. I just don't like anything that has solid things. It bores me. It fries my brain cells. It's just so hard for me. I'm so bored. Well success looks at you and says I won't go to that person. They're boring. Happiness looks at you and says they're boring. They fry me to death. I will stay away from them. How you treat knowledge is how success will treat you. I don't have time. In Proverbs chapter 1, I want you to read Proverbs chapter 1 and you will see. The Bible says, wisdom went on the streets and screamed, hey come to me. And people said, we don't want you. We're too busy. We don't have time for you. We don't like you. You're boring. You're old-fashioned. We're cool and we like other stuff. And wisdom says, come. I will give you wealth. I will give you honor. I will give you health. I will help you. I'm not here to make your life not cool. I'm actually redefining your cool. I, I will make your life in style. I'll give you class about your life. I'll raise your marriage up. I'll raise your life. And people said, we don't want it. And then the wisdom said, when you have calamity, I will laugh. 
and then the wisdom says when you call when you get in trouble and you will I won't answer you know that that, that wakes me up to be a person who values knowledge to be a person I love music I love comedy I like movies I like having fun but if my life is only about that my mind will be empty and my life will carry a resemblance of that if you know one thing about my pastor you will know one thing this man 24 7 listens to so much things about supernatural so much that you're like it's it's amazing how much he listens if you know anything about our key leaders you will know one thing is they read and they read and they read they listen to podcasts when I just came from the vacation I also renewed my devotion to God's truth and God's word before I would come for morning prayer you know from five to seven and then afterwards would go to gym and and take a little nap and and come back you know to church to work and last few weeks you know made a decision that they're, they're, I'm most alert during morning hours my mind is the sharpest yes I'm done with school and yes according to certain people I've even reached certain goals in my life but that that's not I want to unlock what God's given to me not to impress other people not to be better than I was yesterday. I want to unlock everything God placed in my locker. And that, that, that is thousands locally, millions globally. That is that my income to become my tithe. And I want to unlock that. The fact that we will have this many home group leaders soon. I want to unlock that. And to do that, I have to sit more in my beautiful chair with my Bible, with few books. Every morning, an hour, an hour and a half, undistracted and allow God's truth to penetrate my mind you know why you can be successful in marriage not because you're lucky not because you got a charm together but because you're educated on how marriage works do you know why I cannot do a heart surgery not because I'm stupid because I wasn't educated in it knowledge is power it's like the story of a, a, a company a machine broken a company and they hired a, a professional expert he came with his little brown bag and a little hammer he walked around the machine you know this business start losing money because the machine stopped working the man walked around walked around he he stood by the pipe he took his little hammer and he hit the pipe and the machine starts working everybody says well you're such an expert before he walks out he slips a bill to the manager of a thousand dollars the manager almost has a heart attack he said you spent two minutes in my shop you hit a pipe with the hammer and you're charging me a thousand bucks what for he says a dollar is for hitting the pipe 999 dollars is to know where to hit turn to your neighbors say knowledge is power Turn to your other neighbors and say, knowledge is power. Knowledge is the key. Would you agree? You want to unlock your potential? You want to unlock your future? I will give you the key. It is knowledge. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ.